Hi, I'm Virginia Spielman and today I'm in the Sensory Gym here at our headquarters at the Star Institute in Colorado, Denver. And I'm answering a question that we do get asked quite regularly, which is uh, why do we need these crazy gyms that uh, occupational therapists and clinicians use when they're working on sensory integration and processing? And so let's answer that question why um, by thinking about the equipment and the purposes it serves, the environment that we're creating here. It's a really good question to ask because what's the point of working on skills in such a unique environment um, if it's not like anywhere else in the world? You know, the playground has some of these pieces of equipment, but the classroom doesn't, the work environment doesn't, and so on. Well, the thing is, what we're trying to do in the sensory gym is we're trying to change the way the body responds to sensation. And when the body starts to actually organize itself at every level in a different way, in response to sensation or in anticipation of movement, or in its ability to organize itself in space, then that should generalize. That should be something that you see in other environments. And so we use this specialist equipment that was first pioneered by Dr. A. Jean Ayres, who's one of our absolute heroes. She uh, created um, beautiful equipment uh, like scooter boards, that went down ramps and she would get on those scooter boards with the kids. She would, she created dynamic suspended equipment for the, the use in this kind of way. So different types of swings, platform swings and so on. And then of course, over the years, you change the tools that you use with the technology advances that are available to you. And so occupational therapists and physiotherapists and the like, are inventing things all the time because what we want for our children is high intensity, novel, high novelty sensory experiences. We want them to keep having to adapt to what's happening in their environment and with their body to be able to respond to the game, to the activity, to, to whatever the, the, the spaceship that they're getting on. We want it to feel a little bit different, just enough to push their development so that they create a new response and then we practice that new functional adaptive response again and again and again. And we look for mastery and then we change a little bit more and we bring in something new. And there are some great pieces of equipment in many sensory gyms that we use for this. And in a way, one of the things that we're doing is we're simulating those high intensity novel sensory experiences that infants uh, experience and young children when they're thrown about and everything's new and wonderful. They're carried on mummy's chest. They sit on daddy's shoulders. Um, they go down the slide and it's the biggest, most wonderful piece of equipment they've ever seen. But as these children get bigger, or if their bodies need bigger, then we start going into, well, we need specialist equipment here to create that change in the brain and the body that can generalize to other environments. And so we use pieces of equipment like zip lines. Uh, they're fantastic. You get lovely um, traction on your joints. Um, you get compression as you climb on climbing walls. You get the bump at the end of the zip line and the crash as you fall in the balls. And then all of those balls touching your skin and telling you where you are in space. And as you push through them, you get resistance and your body has to really figure out where it is and where your feet are touching the ground and you can't see them because they're covered in the balls of the ball pool. And we love Lycra. Uh, Lycra is a great tool for, for getting all of that input again because it's got you lie in lycra that's suspended from the ceiling you get resistance you get tactile you get movement in that vestibular system as you move around this suspended piece of lycra or multiple pieces of lycra or something like the boundex 
which is a beautiful piece of equipment in a box shape where children can climb in, they can make faces, they can climb through layers of lycra. And then we like bungee cords and we like this, this wonderful fitness wheel that we've chosen to suspend at the moment. Uh, it has a sort of trampoline type base and so there's resistance, there's movement. You're having to make postural adjustments but you can suspend it and it can swing. You can take it down and you can hide inside it. You can jump on top of it. You can sit in it and it can be rolled around. And it's also a lovely piece of equipment. We like this one because it, it's got enough space for two. And so any piece of equipment that offers social affordances, opportunities for connection, we really love those as well. We love physio balls. Uh, we love anything where you can hang, so like these recreational rings that we would suspend from the ceiling, or you could suspend it from a wall and you could use it to pull your body on the swing back and forth. Um, and then you're getting kids to use two hands as well as they make those movements. So we use all this crazy equipment um, because it offers high intensity, novel experiences. And then it's the therapist's job to keep those organized, regulated. They can be joyful, they can be fast fun, but they need to be calm and organized enough so that that brain and body is really learning and also getting a really good sense of self-esteem as they master jumping around on wonderful pieces of equipment like the launch pad or rebounders. We use a lot of those, trampolines and so on. Um, and rolling through small spaces, building things with foam blocks and then knocking them down, sitting on different types of swings in ways that require different responses from the body. And this can all look like play. And why are we just playing with our kids? And we love it when people say to us, well, that just looked like play because that means that we're doing our job because the child who is playing and trying their hardest because they want to defeat the bad guy or because they're working in a game of chase or they're hiding because of social connection, that child, we hypothesize, is making the biggest games from the, sense of, from the point of view that they are reorganizing how their body responds to the environment. When you take skills and you teach them as exercises or more sorts of protocols and you take the fun out of it, we start to think, well, we're siloing things out a bit too much. We're not going to see this impact the classroom, the home and so on. And maybe they're just learning what we call a discrete skill. So great, you know, they can do this one type of star jump on the trampoline. But when it's play, it's dynamic, there's movement, there's people. You're learning so many things at once. And that's why we think play in environments like this that offer, offer rich sensory opportunities is incredibly valuable and is able to, in the right dosage, change a child, change an adolescent, change an adult in the way that their brain and body respond to the world so that they feel better as they move around. They feel that they are agents in control of their own bodies and environments that they are competent and masters uh, in the world around them. So I hope this was helpful. It was part of our Sensory Awareness Month series. And um, also, as you know, we want to give all of this information away for free. So we are trying to translate our material into different languages so that we can reach 2.4 billion more people. And so there's a link about that down below as well. Thanks for listening.